Hey everyone, now my name's Kelvin, and welcome to my video tutorial for Rough and Vibrant Watercolor Effect Pro. Uh, this is an add-on for Adobe Photoshop, and it's going to work with CS5, CS6, uh, and all Creative Cloud versions. In this tutorial, we're going to do two different projects, and this is going to help me show you a little bit about what this add-on can do. Uh, the first project, we're going to make this isolated parrot image, uh, and then later on in the video, I'm going to show you some other settings and uh, how to make this sort of simple square painting image out of a photograph. So in order to get started, the first thing you need to do is download that zip folder and then unzip it. And inside you'll find two Photoshop documents, this uh, masks preview image and then a readme. And uh, this readme will have links to this video uh, and then some more information about this add-on. And this masks preview image here, this will just give you a quick preview of all the masks included. And uh, up here, these two Photoshop documents, these are actually these are the actual add-on, and uh, they're both the same. The effect is the same. This is just a horizontal one, and this is just a vertical one. And uh, for this demo, for this tutorial, I'm just going to work with the vertical one. So I'll drag that into Photoshop to open it up. So this is what the effect looks like when you open it up, and it comes with this default image sort of already loaded in there with the effect applied. And uh, you can swap in your own image by going right to the smart object, and that's this top layer here. And uh, to open that up. Just select the little uh, smart object icon right there and double click it. And uh, it may ask you something, it may throw up a little dialog box, but just click OK. And uh, before, um, this was the original document, but after we opened that, it, it basically opened up another tab up here. So we have two documents open in Photoshop. And uh, this layer 111, uh, that's this one here. This is where you're going to place your image. Uh, and then when we're done with that, you're going you're gonna to X out of this layer. It's going to say, do you want to save it? And then you're going to save it. So make sure when you paste your image in, uh, make sure it's below the masks. And uh, I'm not going to go over the masks in this video. Uh, I'll put a link in the description to a previous video that I did that explains that. So I've already got some images uh, that I've decided to work with in this tutorial. And uh, we're going to use this parrot one. And I'm going to drag it into Photoshop. So when I drag my image in, it's a little bit too big, so I'm going to scale it down uh, and then press Enter. And uh, it's appearing here at the very top, and it's supposed to be underneath all this, so I'll just drag it down. And then the default image here is still, uh, still on, so I'll hide that by clicking the little eye icon there. And uh, I can use the arrow tool to kind of move around my parrot design here, and uh, once I'm happy with where it is on the artboard, I'll close and save the smart object. And uh, this will take a minute to load. And uh, it'll ask you if you want to save it, so click Yes. And uh, just for the sake of brevity, I'm going to speed this up. So here's what our parrot looks like uh, after the effect has been applied. And uh, I'll zoom in here so we can get a closer look. And uh, after the effect is applied, you have all these folders down here. And I've designed these to be kind of like options. So the green ones are ones you can turn on and off uh, or change the opacity. And uh, the red ones here are ones I recommend you don't mess with unless you're a more advanced Photoshop user. Uh, because this one, for example, uh, contains the actual watercolor effect. And uh, even small changes in there could kind of mess this up. So only go in there if you're really uh, willing for experimentation. But uh, the rest of these folders here are really easy and foolproof. Uh, for example, the uh, contrast colors one, you can turn that on. Uh, and uh, it'll give the colors a little more contrast between the lights and the darks. Uh, and then, for example, darker colors, you can turn that one on, uh, and it'll darken everything up. But uh, most of these are pretty self-explanatory, and uh, some of the effects are quite strong. So if you want like a darker color but not this dark or more dark, uh, just select that darker color layer uh, and then change the opacity. You could make it a really dark um, or a really light effect like that. And uh, another thing you can control is the paper texture. Uh, so it's this very top one here, and this is just the paper texture on the watercolor effect. So if you want this to be smooth, uh, you can just turn it off, and it'll have no texture at all. But if you want to have a lot of texture, uh, turn that on, uh, select the paper texture layer, and then you can increase the opacity, maybe to 75% or something, uh, and you'll have this super, super hard paper texture on there. And it just depends on what kind of image you're using. Uh, you may find with certain images you want just a really light texture and on other images it looks better with a really strong texture. Uh, ideally this is probably good around 30 or something like that. Pretty mild. Now this speckling on the outside is totally optional. Uh, again it depends on your project and uh, what you're making with this. But if you want to just turn that off uh, it's called splatter here. So just click splatter, click the little eye there uh, and it'll turn that off. 
uh, if you want it but you want it stronger or, or less strong just select it and again uh, change the opacity so here it's at 80 percent uh, pretty high if I turn it down it'll be really faint maybe put it somewhere in the middle uh, just depends on uh, what look you're trying to get with this effect I think it looks pretty good probably at 50 percent and then another thing you can change is in the background by default it has this paper texture and uh, you can just turn that off by this little very last green folder here so that'll turn off the background paper texture but it won't affect your image and this is nice if you want to make this into a kind of transparent PNG watercolor element so you could export what you have here as say a JPEG load it back into Photoshop uh, as a flattened image uh, and then just select the white using the selection tool and just delete that and then you can just save it as a PNG that way but uh, basically uh, this would be done uh, and you'd save it just like anything else uh, I'll zoom out here so we can get a look and uh, I, I don't recommend cropping it in this because when, when you crop it it's gonna have to reload the effect and it'll take some time so I recommend cropping it after you save it as an image so to save it as an image you just do it like normal you just go to file uh, save for web or export uh, save for web depends on which version of Photoshop you have but save for web and uh, you just use this just like you would any other image uh, make sure the quality is quite high uh, and JPEG or PNG is fine but you just save it to your desktop like this so this project is basically done uh, I'm gonna close this uh, close this effect start it again and I'm gonna show you how to use that uh, sort of square image I mentioned earlier and how to use how to apply this effect on just a basic photo so for the second part of the tutorial I'm gonna start over from scratch and I've got the template opened up and loaded into Photoshop and I'm gonna go right into the smart object by double clicking it and uh, I've already got an image chosen for this project so I'll just drag it in and uh, same thing here it's gonna be a little big so I'll scale it down and uh, for this tutorial I'm gonna show you how to make the edge of the video uh, the picture a little bit rough with the eraser tool whereas in previous videos I showed you how to use that uh, use the masks to do that so if you want to learn how to use the masks uh, I'll put a link in the description uh, that'll send you to the other video explaining that but for this tutorial I'm gonna do it with the uh, eraser tool so I'll select the arrow tool there and kind of center this and uh, I'll turn off the default one and then uh, I've pasted it in here and it's up at the top uh, I want to make sure it's below the masks just a good habit to be in and uh, since I've dragged it from my desktop it has this little icon here and if you paste an image in it won't have this this next step is isn't gonna help you uh, but if you're dragging it from your desktop it's gonna remember that location the kind of linked image uh, and that's what this means here so I want to rasterize this so I'm gonna click on it and then rasterize layer uh, and this will let me erase it so I'll go over here to my eraser tool and uh, I'm gonna go up here where it has some options about the eraser uh, and I'm gonna it sort of brings up this menu here and the size is fine hardness is 100% that's good and I'll scroll down to the very bottom and uh, I'll select this 100 brush uh, this does a pretty good job on the edges but you can choose any of these brushes and uh, it's a little bit small I'll scale it up and uh, eraser tool selected the image is highlighted uh, and I can just go ahead and kind of roughen up the edge like this so what I'm trying to do is make it look as if uh, it's been painted so it doesn't have perfectly square edges or square corners it's a little bit rough uh, a little bit of an art to this uh, and it's up to you but you can do any shape it could be square round or triangle uh, just depends on your project so this particular uh, eraser brush here uh, leaves a pretty rough edge which I think looks pretty nice after the effect is applied so there we go That looks pretty good and uh, just like before I'm gonna close and save the smart object so I'll go up here and uh, click the little X and then do yes uh, and then I'll fast forward it again and uh, show you the next steps uh, after the effect has been applied okay so here's our result after the effect has been applied uh, I'll zoom in here and uh, we'll, we'll modify just a little bit it looks like it could use a little bit of contrast so I'll turn on this contrast colors layer there we go just like that and actually it's a little this actually looks like a little bit too much so I'll just lower the opacity so it's at 55 now I'll cut it in half maybe 25 22 something like that uh, and then maybe the colors just a little bit darker that looks good 
And I'll try vibrant colors and see how that looks. A little bit too vibrant. Um, let's try... This splatter here looks pretty good, but I'll see what it looks like if it's a little bit darker. So I'll increase the opacity there. Let's try that. That one looks pretty cool. Let's try 75. Okay, that looks pretty good. And I'll try softer colors. This is one that gives the colors a little bit more neutral tone. And uh, I think I like that. That looks pretty nice. And maybe a little bit more paper texture. So I'll select the paper texture layer and maybe turn it up to around 40 or something. Okay, that looks cool. And I'll turn off the background again, just like that. So it's no paper texture back here. And this would be done. Uh, you just export this like any other image, just like we did before, uh, going to File, Export, and Save for Web, just like that. And then after that, you could open that image back into Photoshop and crop it. So that's pretty much it. I hope this is a pretty good overview of how to use this add-on. Uh, if you have any questions about this video or this add-on or even Photoshop in general, just leave a comment here or send me an email directly. But uh, other than that, guys, thanks for your support and thanks for watching.